Solutions to number 5, starting off with a bit of algebra. So we're going to simplify 7x plus 4x, and 7x and 4x make 11x, because you've got 7 of them and 4 of them. Now, y times y times y times y. So when you multiply, it means you're going to get a power. This is going to be y to the power of 4, because there's 4 of them. This one here, we've got two sorts of things. We've got e's, we've got a positive 6 and a positive e, and we've got f's. We've got positive 5f's and a negative 5f's. So the thing to be careful with here is that you just keep the signs attached to the each term. So this is positive 6 and positive 1, so that's going to be 7 e's there, because we've got 6 e's and an extra e. Here we've got 5 f's, but then we've got minus 3 f's, which is going to give us a total of 2 f's. So when you've got two different letters, you should have two separate things in your answer, and you can see that those are my two separate things there. OK, sequence of patterns, a bit of an nth term rule problem here. So we've got our pattern, draw pattern number four. Just be careful when you do this, because how annoyed would you be if you lost marks just for doing this carelessly? So one, two, three, four. So mine's going to have five. So one, two, three, four, five. And the same on the bottom. It doesn't have to be a Picasso, but it does have to have the right number of bits in it. Now complete the table, the number of squares, and we can see it's going up in twos, four, six, eight, nine, ten, and I can check that one, can't I? One, two, three, four, five, ten, yeah, and this one's going to be ten, eleven, twelve, and go back and double count, check, the number of times I've seen people who have just written something down quickly, and you've lost a mark, and it's gone, be really careful. Now, find an expression in terms of n for the number of squares in pattern number n. Really complicated looking? Don't worry. You, every time you see one of these, it's a good idea to do the same thing anyway. And you're going to find the nth term, which is what they're after. So this is going up in twos. And if it's going up in twos, that means it's like the two times table. Because if it was going up in threes, it would look like the three times table and so on. The two times table is the only times table that goes up in twos. So I'm going to write the two times table down. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And then hopefully what you're noticing is that the number of squares is the two times table add two. Notice each time if you add two you get that one. So these numbers here, we can call them the two times table add two each time. And that's what we write down. We write the 2 times table, or 2n, add 2. And that gets us 2 marks. OK, slightly harder stuff now. A bit of transformations. We're going to reflect shape A in the line x equals minus 1. So first of all, we find x equals minus 1. So here's x, there's minus 1, and it's a line, remember. And it's this line here. And if you were uncertain about this, you would draw yourself a little table, you'd write x and y, you'd say to yourself, oh, x is always minus 1, and this is just going to be 1, 2, 3, and then you'd plot minus 1, 1, which is there, minus 1, 2, which is there, minus 1, 3, which is there, and you get the picture, they'd all line up. And now we're going to reflect it, so there's two squares here from our mirror line to the shape, so we go this way, two squares, and draw our reflection carefully. And you might even use tracing paper. And there is our little reflection in the right line. Now, second part. Describe fully the single transformation that will map shape P onto shape Q. Now this is a terror question. And thereafter, two marks. there's two marks. The first one is for the right word. And these are the words. You've either going to write, it's either going to be a translate, an enlarge, a rotate, or a reflect. So going from P onto Q, well, we can rule out enlargement, can't we, straight away? This is not that one. Rotate, well, you can see it's not a rotate, but if you put a piece of tracing paper over this and turned it round, it wouldn't fit onto P. You don't need to rotate it. 
it's not a reflect you can't see a mirror line there it's actually a translate the whole shape has been moved along and up a bit so your first mark gets for describing it saying the right word it's a translate so there is a mark for each of these depending on which one they ask you need to know them and the second mark is going to come from describing it now there's two ways to describe it we could say if we take say this point here and it's from P to Q so here's P so it's going one two three four five six left and one down make sure you get them right around that's not as good not nearly as good as going six left so that's minus six and one down that's minus one because this is the positive direction that's the negative direction and so on and the top one is the along the corridors so the left or right and the bottom was the up or down question four now, I know many of you will do this by guessing numbers, but really, this is an excuse to whip out your algebra, so give it a go. So, first of all, we've got Tarish, Peter and Ben. So, we need to, to write, to decide which one we're going to call X, or unknown, or whatever letter you want. So, I'm going to call Ben. Ben is going to get x pounds. Now, Ben gets twice as much money as Tarish, so that means that Tarish gets x divided by 2. Now, Tarish gets three times as much money as Peter. And at this point, I'm thinking to myself, that doesn't seem like a very nice way of doing it it would be a lot easier if Peter was X. So I'm going to change it. I'm going to put Peter as X and see how that turns out. Simply because I, it's just not making the algebra very nice. I've got a fraction here. I could work out what Tarish is, but, but let's see if it works out better this way around. So if Peter gets X, Tarish gets 3X because he gets three times as much money as Peter, doesn't he? Now, Ben, in that case gets twice as much money as Tarish, he gets two of this, he gets 6x. Now that's a lot nicer than doing it with the fractions. We could get the same answer this way, but this is not nicer. Now if we add them all up, we get 6 and 3, which makes 9, we get 10x, and we know that the total money is 54. And then we can divide by 10, so x is equal to 5.4, which tells us how much Peter gets. Ben gets 6 times it. 6 times 5.4 and 6 times 5.4 is equal to 32.4 so Ben gets 32.4 Tarish gets 3 lots of 5.4 and 3 lots of 5.4 is half of that which is 16.2 and of course we said Peter gets 5.4 and if we add those up so 32.4 and 5.4 you'll see that it adds up to 54 so the answer is 32.4 now you might have chosen to attack this in yet another way other than guessing you might have chosen to do it using ratio so if we say Peter gets so we've got Peter Tarish and Ben and Peter gets 1 Tarish gets 3 times as much as that so he gets 3 and Ben gets 6 times as much as that so we've got 1 to 3 to 6 as our ratio and then you've got your total which is 10 and then the 54 and this becomes a ratio problem so you could do it that way um, or you could just guess, guess values the only time guessing won't get you any marks is if they tell you to use an algebraic method, in which case guessing will lose you marks. So just be careful about that. Hope that was helpful and hope you'll be listening to the next ones. Good luck and keep up the hard work.